Top 3 Ghosts Trapped on Video Hello folks all over the world, who doesn't happen to walk down the stairs of a building and meet a ghost? Or rather a ghost together with its shadow clearly projected on the wall. Although the channel of the author of this video claims that it is a remake of a real event, many channels of the paranormal pass this video as a real encounter with a ghostly figure. Fortunately, those who have been following us for a long time, now have a trained eye, and immediately recognize a clearly fake movie from a real one. Welcome back to our episode of Top 3 Ghost Trapped on Video, let's start our adventure. Echoes After Suicide The third video was shot in Peru, in the Quinta Heron House in Lima, a complex of six abandoned Victorian mansions dating back to the 18th century. This place was the scene of death and disgrace, first a Japanese ambassador who fell in economic disgrace took his own life by stabbing himself in the belly, then a ten-year-old boy killed his mother in one of the buildings, and finally a Spanish man, persecuted by the Catholic Inquisition, left a curse before he died on the spot. Published on the Franco TV channel by investigator Franco, traveling to South America from his Orlando, California headquarters, the video was released on August 24, 2022 in which we see Franco venturing into the complex in the middle of the night, managing to capture some truly disturbing EVPs in some rooms, and not only. How haunted this place is, especially at night. There's a lot of movement that goes on, shadow figures, um, doors closing, sound of walking and footsteps that go on within this building. Look at that, it has a very Victorian look to it as you're going inside of it. I'm still kind of getting the general basis of the area, just walking around here. So in this window here, there was people inside this room working and pretty much kind of maintained the area and cleaning it up. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, this window right here next to the wall here, uh, started vibrating and it kept going continuously and it would sound like bangs and they thought it was people inside here messing around so they went to investigate the area and apparently it was completely vacant nobody was here and so ever since then everyone else was kind of nervous because that was just one of the many uh, pretty much ghosts from the very beginning we can hear some strange noises coming from the rooms, but Franco, does not notice some details that only the most attentive users report under the video. Oh, that's terrifying. I guess this is some of the stuff that was hanged on the wall. And there's also a lot of corners. Look at this. Oh, listen. Is that blood? During the investigation, Franco also lights up the spirit box and senses there is something strange, but does not notice multiple dark shadows behind a stairway. You sound like I said you're a liar. Why did you take your life away? And the phenomena intensify when he goes to the adjacent building, the former seat of the embassy where the suicide of the Japanese ambassador took place. Here Franco, while exploring the central hall, perceives that something is definitely out of place. Kinda got lost here for a second. Is that a mask? Now listen, this place is exactly how it was when the owner bought it. Jesus Christ, I keep feeling like something was right there. Even when he appoints the president in the comments, users point out that there seems to be something moving inside one of the rooms. Something, I don't remember the last name. 
and everything here is exactly as it was. Um, let's start this way first. A huge complex of buildings that hides a truly dark past and that Franco has promised to revisit. Poltergeist from the past. We now move to Mexico, exactly to Santa Catarina, Nuevo Leon to analyze together a video posted on the old social network of 2003 called MySpace, a place known mainly for sharing music, where a user named Bruno Lumbreras posted a series of videos really disturbing including a poltergeist phenomenon that happened in his house. No longer available on that social network, the video was reposted on Cheeky Monkey's YouTube channel in 2008, it is a very old video so the resolution is not great. Let's watch it together. According to the little information we have, this is one of the first videos shot with the phone to document what looks like a poltergeist phenomenon in broad daylight, the chandelier moves by itself and flashes and at the same time also the bowl of cereal and milk on the table. First, the author begins to take back the chandelier, and then immediately he films the bowl that moves slowly and then hurls itself to the ground falling from the table. Someone in the comments claims that it is a fake because the author films the bowl before it falls, in reality the bowl moved from the beginning, as you can see from the images. It is difficult to determine whether it is a fake or not, because at a first analysis there are no fishing lines in the bowl and its fall from the table appears quite natural. The author then is visibly panicked and runs away from his home and his reaction is also quite sincere. In any case, whether it is a fake or not, it remains without a doubt, so natural as creepy. The Haunted Ship When we are faced with a serious and professional paranormal investigation, we realize it immediately. This is the case with the first video this week, shot at the United States Naval Shipbuilding Museum and USS Salem, a very famous museum located in Quincy, Massachusetts, USA. Here Seth Borden with his group of investigators decides to analyze one of America's most famous military ships, the heavy cruiser USS Salem 139 of 1949. The story goes that this cruiser was in Greece in 1953 during 113 earthquakes that hit this land hard, and the ship had to rescue thousands of civilians who died along with several sailors, from their injuries. Many of those unfortunate souls have never left Salem. They are still on board, some looking for their lost loved ones, others looking for their saviors. Published on August 18, 2022 on the YouTube channel entitled Seth Borden, this video shows Seth along with Josh, Steve and Dylan, wandering inside the ship's chambers in the middle of the night trying to discover the name of one of the long-lost sailors. Those places are great, but in terms of volume of activity, yeah. they are nothing compared to this place. We have entities that we speak to on a regular basis. A guy by the name of the Chief. I would say the Chief is the guardian of the ship. Everybody wants the Chief's name. So we should all just try to get Chief's name tonight. That would be great, because, you know, we've been trying for a very, very long time. Yeah. But this is the war room. This is where the officers ate and had meetings and stuff. You know, the ship never saw any combat, but she spent most of her time in the Mediterranean. And when she was in the Med in 1953, it was a very, very bad earthquake on two of the Greek islands. And since Salem was there, she was basically the hospital. They were more interested in getting people aboard and treated and off so they right. could bring more people. I don't think counting was a priority. The death toll ranges anywhere from a low of about 75 to a high of 400. Whoa, so they all died on the ship. Yeah, they were brought aboard the ship for treatment and, and died. During the dialogue sustained with the caretaker about the events and the rooms of the ship, someone in the comments points out the very rapid passage of a dark shadow reflecting on the keeper's shirt. Say he's an old sailor. You know, when the pandemic first started and I started working at home, my hair was longer than yours. And every... Every time I came aboard, the chief would yank my hair. Yeah. Oh, crap. The caretaker explains to the investigators that the ship is ruled by a more authoritarian entity than the others, the chief, who appears to be the keeper of the ship and, despite several seances and spirit box sessions in an attempt to know the name of this guardian, he does not know replies were ever obtained. The group decided to start a spirit box session right in this guardian's room, and the answers were immediate and terribly gruesome. Are you here with us? Ooh. Oh, yep. 
What's that? Same noise. As soon as we try to play that EVP back. Whoa! What? Did you just hear that? That was, that was, that was down the hall this way. Whoa, this... What was that then? Hello? At a given moment the boys try to ask the name of the guardian, and the answer comes immediately. Chief, can you give us your name? Another disturbing situation reported by some users in the comments occurred in the surgical room, when one of the boys, pronouncing the word, holy man, a clearly demonic EVP is recorded saying, we are a legion. We talked about the chief again. Yo. That's crazy. We are a what? We are something. Yeah. Clear as day. Oh, yeah. That's so... The group moves into the room defined by the guardian of the place as the most haunted of the ship, and here they immediately obtain incredible evidences. Oh, we're helpless. That's way worse. <laughs> Some touch it? My hair just got touched. I oh. literally just felt my hair get He flipped. said every time he came out of here, he got his hair pulled when he I had long hair. if you saw it on camera, but I, I felt it. Holy shit. That one when he got it. Yeah, we'll mind you. Oh, good point. Flashlight's on. Flashlight's on. And it is precisely in this room that the boys, upon request for an answer from some entity, manage to capture something that goes beyond any rational explanation. Is Nico here? Tell us who Dan is. If somebody's in here with us, can you give us a sign? We can't see you, but we can hear you. Yeah. Alice. Alice? Alice? Alice. The woman's name, right after we heard a woman's voice. We have entities that we speak to on a regular, a little girl named Lucy. Absolutely an extraordinary investigation by Seth and his colleagues that shows that in that ship there are entities from the past and probably something negative as well. And now we want to show you a rather bizarre video on YouTube reported by several channels on the paranormal where you see a car walking along the road and the headlights frame a guy with a sheet on who pretends not to have his head. If you want this material do not subscribe do not leave any like. Seriously, if you appreciated our work, follow us on our social networks to be always notified about new videos, leave a like to help us, thank you for watching and, as usual, good night.